washed out my front wheel. You okay? Yeah. Hey, there he is. Happy birthday. <laughs> so, Anyone who has a, a passion for a specific technology is, is always looking for that, that place to apply it to a, a sort of grand scale problem. And when I, when I came across the opportunity at Wing, it, it really felt like that fit where I could take everything I had learned about, uh, about the, the drone space, everything I'd learned about aviation, and, and apply it to a problem that wouldn't just be an aircraft design problem, it would be a, a problem that changed how transportation worked, how aviation works. Um, the idea of, of introducing aviation to orders of magnitude uh, more people was something that was really compelling. Yeah, you know, there's something about flying that just has always been really special for me. And that's, that's extended back, you know, for as long as I can remember. My, my grandfather uh, flew B-25s in World War II, my dad was a shop teacher who was always kind of, you know, tinkering and, and interested in flying stuff. That love of aviation um, and kind of the experiences with aviation have extended back you know, longer than I can remember. Uh, a story that, that my family always tells me is uh, when my parents brought me back uh, from the hospital after I was born, my dad had built a, a rocket that was, you know, sitting next to, to, next to my crib. And from that point on, it's, it's always been about aviation. So the, the first time I, I actually flew on an airplane, I was accompanying my dad on a, on a school trip down to the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. Um, it, was, it was a super special moment for me. And then getting to go to the National Air and Space Museum and seeing, you know, kind of all of the, all of the rock stars of aviation, seeing the Wright Flyer, seeing the Spirit of St. Louis, seeing the Bell X-1, um, seeing all of those, those creations that uh, were almost like mythical to me. They were these tangible artifacts of flight. Um, it was a, a super memorable experience. So I, uh, I ended up uh, going to, to MIT to study aeronautics and astronautics. And it was the, the first time in my life where I was, I was surrounded by people who loved the same things that I loved. While I was building planes for, for research and, and for my classes, I also uh, got the opportunity to build a lot of planes just for fun. And I really ex expanded my horizons in, in the hobby space, uh, building, you know, pretty much everything I've always wanted to do uh, as a kid. So, you know, whether it was a spaceship that I'd seen flying around in a movie, um, or, you know, a model of a, a historic aircraft that I'd always wanted to, you know, I had a plastic model of it sitting on my, my desk uh, when I was a kid. Getting the opportunity to build those things and see them fly was, was a, a, a kind of another turning point for me. Engineering is a science of practice. It really is. To be an effective engineer, you need to try things, you need to experiment, you need to take theoretical knowledge, you need to apply it practically. Drones for me became a, a great outlet for that, where I could take, uh, you know, theory. I could take equations I had learned in an aerodynamics class, and I could apply them directly um, to physical things. And that connection between uh, the theoretical world and the physical world is is really where what I enjoy most about engineering. It's that ability to take scientific thought and apply it to um, practical, tangible problems. I wanted to find a career that, that mapped to that same sort of, of rapid pace of innovation. And as I was, as I was leaving college, the, the drone industry was really starting to take off and it seemed like the perfect place where there was, there was so much opportunity. It was, a, it was an industry of what ifs, like everyone had ideas about what UAS and, and what drones could be used for and you know, nobody had done it yet. Um, and so that opportunity to, to do something in aviation for the first time was really what enticed me to, to pursue a career uh, in, the, in the space around drones. So when I came across the opportunity at Wing, it, it really signaled to me this, this unique opportunity to apply the, the emerging technology in the drone space to a, a, a truly grand scale problem. On the surface, Wing is, Wing is trying to 
you know, deliver goods with drones. So it's, it's a pretty simple mission, you know, take, take drones and use them to move stuff that people want. The deeper level for me is the idea to, to introduce far more people than ever experience aviation to aviation. What, what I think uh, underpins some of, of Wing's kind of core engineering philosophy is this idea of, of taking these really complex problems, you know, something that if you looked at it, you'd say like, how could we ever, how could we ever solve this problem of, uh, of you know, this, this incredibly coupled system with all these different elements that are all trying to work together in, in a super reliable way. And, and the way that I've approached it, um, you know, both, uh, you know, whether it's, whether it's building, you know, RC airplanes or, or building uh, aircraft for wing, it's to take these big problems and break them up into a bunch of little problems. And, and when you do that, uh, the decision making becomes much more straightforward. You can take these, these complex, multidisciplinary, coupled scenarios and break them up into a bunch of discrete decisions. So it's, you know, do we, you know, do we have 12 rotors or 14 rotors or 18 rotors? And, and you can take each one of those problems and, and solve it in isolation. And when you aggregate those things, uh, you, can, you can create complexity and create robustness out of simplicity. Um, and that's, that's, been a, that's been one of my kind of core driving philosophies throughout my career is, is how to take these complex problems and break them up into digestible problems. An example for me on, on this approach of, of how do you solve complex problems as an aggregate of, of simple solutions it, it is pretty fundamental to the, the, our approach to vertical takeoff and landing flight. So you can, you can look through the history books and see dozens, maybe hundreds of configurations that didn't work around the, the problem of how do you take an airplane and make it hover around like a helicopter and make it fly like, like an airplane. A, a, lot of these, a lot of these approaches uh, have failed or have, have run into challenges because of the inherent complexity in the problem, right? So, you know, helicopters are complex, airplanes are complex. Trying to get something to do both of those things could be additive complexity. Uh, the, the approach we've taken is to sort of ignore that complexity. Um, and, and if you look at the wing aircraft, it's, it's basically, you know, a, a multi-rotor, uh, pasted onto an airplane. So, you know, it has all the normal things that an airplane has, it has all the normal things that, that a multi-rotor has. And, and in doing so, the, the act of, you know, transitioning from hovering to, to forward flight is, is very simple. You just, you know, hover like, like a multi-rotor and then you, you turn on the forward flight props and you start accelerating. And once the wing is doing its wing things, you, you turn off the, the helicopter part. Um, and, and these sorts of approaches of, of, uh, robustness in depth in in complexity through uh, a combination of, of simple solutions uh, underpins a lot of elements of of how our system works even even the, the number of rotors that we picked um, is a representation of that so we're, we're flying these aircraft over over people's homes over people's neighborhoods we want them to be exceptionally reliable so you know when a wing and a wing airplane takes off we want it to you know stay in the air and 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 deliver its goods and come back in, in the safest way possible. So reliability is, is, is core to everything that we do. And for, for multi-rotor aircraft, um, you have to look at, you know, what happens if any one of the, the hover motors fails. So if you're, you're flying around and one of these motors fails, you know, the, the ability to control the aircraft can be degraded. You need redundancy, you need robustness to that. And so from a, from a pure reliability standpoint, um, the wing system would work with, with eight hover rotors. So, you know, eight props all pointing up. If you lose any one of them, the airplane can still fly around. It can still complete the mission. But the, the wing drone is, is not designed just to do that. It's, it's it, you know, it also has to, you know, it has to meet performance goals. It has to, you know, be able to deliver uh, goods at a, a reliable cost, at an approachable cost. And uh, by adding, another four rotors, we're able to use smaller diameter propellers, which can use uh, lighter, cheaper materials. We're able to absorb more propulsion system failures and, 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 and fly um, in, in an even more robust state. Um, we're able to do uh, novel tuning of the, the sound of the aircraft. We're able to do all these second order 
um, problems that if you were just designing it from a pure reliability and performance standpoint, you'd overlook those 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 deeper um, those deeper trades. So I I look at I look at an airplane like this as an aerodynamicist, and I, I cringe a little bit, right? Because as a as, as someone who's who's spent a career, um, you know, building flying things that are are supposed to be high performance, you know, they, they typically end up looking like sailplanes, like long, skinny wings, very low drag uh, elements, and and you look at our airplane, and it it is sort of the antithesis of all those things, um, but it's 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 there because. It's, it's supposed to do a very specific job. It's supposed to move goods in a, in a very reliable way. And that means that the, the function will always kind of dominate all the other, all the other trades. And, and that's how you end up with these, these pretty interesting looking configurations. So, you know, we've, we've, we've designed the system, we've, we've built a bunch of them, um, and now they're, they're in operations going and, and moving goods uh, around the world. Today on, in, in locations in Australia, in Virginia, in Finland, uh, folks can can pull up our app on their phone and they can you know select some items that they want and the airplane will you know go pick them up and and fly them to their backyard and that's that's one of the first examples we've seen of of people really interacting with with drones uh, you know for a for a commercial use case so you know these people are are using this as as part of their their daily experience. So whether it's a, a cup of coffee or a bottle of cold medicine, or, or any sort of pop up need that somebody happens to have, they've they've incorporated drone delivery into their their you know their day to day routine. So when when seven year old me was was standing in the the gift shop of the Smithsonian, you know, picking out this airplane, uh, I I could not have imagined that you know. Almost 30 years later, uh, I would I would be contributing to aviation in a way where you know my the the, the airplane that that I I help design the the airplane that that represents the work uh, that that our team has has put in would end up in the same space. If I could have my you know now three year old daughter have the same experience where you know she stands in the Smithsonian and looks up and sees an airplane that that we designed, um, I, I can't really imagine. I, I can't really imagine something more fulfilling than that. We're past the point of what if. We're past the point of, is this an industry that's going to work? Is this a technology that's applicable to everyone's life? I think that we've, we've fundamentally answered the question that, you know, these tiny airplanes can solve really big problems. And what I'm really excited about is what comes next. So, you know, we've, we've been we as an industry have been operating in, in somewhat of a sandbox where there's either you know trials or pilot programs or experimentation and the outcome of all of those experiments has been positive right like it's it's a it's we the you know the, the verdict is in that this works and so now the question becomes what do we really use it for so now that you've you've solved the kind of fundamental problems of of, of does the technology work? Does it does it interface with the sort of existing world? Um, it can become more than just you know the the solutions that we've already thought of. I think that that's the that's the part that that interests me the most is is what have we what problem have we not thought of solving yet? And and I think that the the deeper that we we go into this industry, the, the longer that we, we continue to operate these aircraft, people, like the, the person that's experiencing the delivery, the person that's you know, watching the airplane fly over, um, they'll have ideas about what to use it for. And, and that's the part that, that excites me the most is, is what comes next. You know, I've, I've, every time I, I get to meet a customer, or every time I, I you know, Get to meet somebody who's new to the team. We, we we ask them like, what do you want delivered with airplanes? And you know, uh, very rarely do we get the same answers. <laughs> I, I think that that's the really cool part is that once you've once you've unlocked this capability, um, you know, the, the, it sounds cliche, but the possibilities are you know are without limit. Like you can you can really start to see how this can play an an everyday role in people's lives.